papers and start looking, you know what I'm about to ask for. <coughs> Feedback, please. Mary. Okay. <laughs> All right, we was talking about um, the uh, Ten Commandments and what Old Testament passages um, Jesus was teaching from, and the reason he was was because that's what they was familiar with, and um, it would get the audience's attention because they knew it was orders from God. Okay, good. Thank you. Who else? Nicholas. Um, when you talked about the difference between living out the law, the rules, and you know, just following the rules, if it was more of a duty or if it was a lifestyle. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else on that side of the room? What you got, Todd? I know you always got something, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your school is on St. Patrick. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's cheating. Oh, we want to welcome... Our long lost soldier back to the house to finish what he started too. Let's welcome Brother Ron Kirchhoff right. back. Yeah. Yeah. He's always got some great Bible study feedback. Yeah. Deaconess. Uh, we talked about uh, murder, about you know how we can murder people not physically but with our thoughts and our actions and our heart. Yeah, and that's what we're spending time on this. Uh, in this lesson is talking about why Jesus considered the anger equivalent to murder for the author. I think that we ended with the, <coughs> the Ten Commandments, how the first five was for God and the last seven, eight, whatever they are, for relationship for men. Yeah. Right. And we talked about why did uh, why did Jesus go there? Because the first ones were a relationship between yeah. us and God. And he's teaching about earthly relationships between us and other humans, right? Very good point. Anything else? All right, well, let's get to it then. I saw this on Facebook, and I think uh, Nicholas just kind of referred to it. Joyce Myers wrote, I don't care how many times you have it underlined in your Bible, if you aren't doing it, you don't know it. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Yeah, we'll okay, post that. I've seen that on your Facebook. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, we're going to, I'm going to share that one. The purpose of the lesson, we have three points for our lesson, is when we allow anger to creep into our lives and control us, we miss out on the life Christ died to give us. Anger isn't the problem, it's a symptom of the problem. Our anger levels, reveals our hearts that must be changed by Jesus alone. And the heart of an angry and insulting person is the same as one who murders. And we're going to get into that a little bit deeper. We are in Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 21. Is everyone there? Word. Amen. Are you there? Dost thou have an attitude? Me? No. Kaya. Okay. Just, just checking. <laughs> All right. Verse 21. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in he danger of hell fire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, verse 24, leave your gift there, there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge, the judge hand you over to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. Assuredly, I say to you, you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. And we 
talked about, as you guys all pointed out, we talked about Jesus said six times you have heard, but I say. And what we established was that Jesus was beginning to make his point to the Israelites and to those who were trying to follow him. And the way he made his point was by going back to the law because they loved and ultimately respected the law. Amen? And the law is what? The word. The message. The law of Moses. The first five books. Ten commandments. Watch and miss it when I put it on the Jeopardy. <laughs> All right. Pass, pass. You need that. <coughs> no, I don't. I, you guys can hear me, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm working. You can have him walk around, though. Yeah. He can be Mr. Mike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all got pastor's attention this evening. Okay, so we answer question number two. What does the Old Testament passages uh, Jesus is teaching from? And he was teaching from uh, Exodus 20.13 and Deuteronomy 5.17 where they list out the Ten Commandments. Amen? Amen. All right. And then we talked about, again, that he dealt with the last six because they deal with our relationships here on earth. Amen? Amen. All right. I don't think we got to question number three, did we? No. All right. So how did Jesus interpret the commandment not to commit murder? And how is this different from the way many in Jesus' day and ours interpret the same commandment? How was Jesus interpreting murder? Brittany, then Todd. Um, I take it as he was interpreting it as if, even if you even if it's something as small as expressing anger for someone, you're held accountable as if you were to commit murder. And how it's different is I think that people then and now take it literally. You have to like actually kill somebody to be committing that sin. Okay. But Jesus was saying it's bigger than that. Okay. You got it all? Anybody want to add anything to that? Okay, good. We might get done a little early today. Um, yeah, Jesus was again talking about the uh, Moses and the commandments. And why? Yeah, why do you suppose he started with murder? We may not get the answer till the very end, but why do you suppose he started with murder and linked it to anger? We already know that anger is, leads to murder, but why, why did he start with murder? Todd? Um, because murder um, to us is like, it's, it's final. It's like serious you know, here on earth. I mean, you murder somebody, you're not coming back. It's the ultimate sin. Yeah. Okay. And, and then linking it to anger, um, it, it represents, you know, hurt and spirit, killing the spirit, you know, you're trying to hurt somebody with your in words or thoughts or actions towards them besides actually killing them. Okay, as, as Nicholas is answering the question, let's think about who he was talking to, who the audience was. Nicholas, what were you going to say? I was going to say it's because he deals with life and death, which is what we came to deal with, which is our life. Okay. Arthur. I would say that uh, because, like, in anger, <coughs> well, anger is so out of control and so unpredictable that it can cause us to really take a life to murder someone. Mm -hmm. So it kind of ties it together for, for me. Okay. Anybody else? Deacon. I was going to say anger, uh, he was talking about the anger that was, uh, you can, I mean, murder, if you, to draw someone away from the truth. Okay, good, good. He, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees was in that meeting, and they took the rules literally, and they prided themselves in following the rules to the letter, didn't they? And Jesus is saying it's more than just the law of the, the letter of the law. <coughs> it's the heart and the spirit that's behind it as well. Were you going to say something, son? So he's beginning to show people that it's more than just, okay, I'm cool because I didn't murder. No, there's more to it than that. Are you following me? 
All right. You guys are too quiet tonight. You're going to have to talk back to me. All right. So. Did we really get a complete answer on how this is different today? How is it different today? Sister Charitha. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to get the clarity I'm waking up to. Okay, uh, we were all we are all guilty of anger. So that's murder to a certain extent. But back in those days, uh, when Jesus was there, you had to pay a penalty. And these days, God holds us accountable, like on Judgment Day. Okay. So, that's why. All right. Uh, can you repeat that in the back room, please? How is this different today? So the, the Pharisees thought, as long as I'm not committing actual murder, I'm cool. Um, well, a lot of how do we look at it today? A lot of us mean of our own understanding uh, in a corrupted world. So we have to go through what uh, we have to go through for a <coughs> To realize it's not the same as well. Okay, thank you. Sister Mary. I was going to say, in my opinion, it ain't really much different than it was back then. I mean, because now we believe the same thing. If we don't actually commit the crime, and actually, you know, then it's not knowledgeable, that, or it's not brought to knowledge that you did do it, you know. I mean, I think it's pretty much the same with this. Kind of makes us like the Pharisees. <laughs> I'm not like Jeffrey Dahmer. Right. <laughs> right. Know? Right. But, but if we get angry with somebody, I bet you we are. So right. speaking of that word anger, let's go to question number four. What is anger? <laughs> what does that mean? Todd, Brittany, did you have your hand up speaking? Yeah. It's a strong anger. feeling of displeasure, rage, or fury. Okay. Brittany? I have a strong feeling of annoyance, displeasure, hostility, filled with anger, provoking anger. Where'd you guys get those from? Google. Google? <laughs> 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 you got yours from the dictionary? I got mine the dictionary, but more, uh, anger is also a warning. <coughs> oh. A warning. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Anger. I got this from um, the, I think it was the Greek dictionary. It says the emotion of instant displeasure, which arises from the feeling of injury done or the discovery of injury intended, or in many cases from the discovery of the omission of good. The emotion of displeasure itself independent, uh, there's a typo right there, of its cause or its consequences. Instant displeasure, which arises from a feeling of injury that's done to us. Boy, that's, uh, yeah. that pretty much hits it right on the head, doesn't it? I think part two of the question is, um, what's part two say? Or is that question number five? No, okay, well, we won't go there yet. Um, so it's a really intense emotion. <clears throat> How many of you can tell when anger is coming on you and, 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 and what and how can you tell? What happens to you? Uh, Tom, Jason, just go around and catch people with their hands up. I can feel my blood pressure start raising. Okay. And as soon as I feel that, I know I'm in trouble. Okay. All right. I noticed it because my face turns red and I, I get heated. You get heated? Okay. Deaconess and then top. Um, yeah. The heartbeat raises. Um, your thoughts become uh, more erratic and um, less clear. Okay. Well, I know all of us have symptoms of anger and, and it all affects us differently. All the way to sweating, clenching your jaw, your fists, uh, heart palpating. Um, uh, yeah, I don't want to get that. Beat. That's the clinician in the house. No, I'm sorry. It's good. My palms are sweating, my legs shake. Your palms sweat, your legs shake. Okay. Nico, did I, did I see your hand around? For me, uh, it's more in the difference of the thoughts I as you do start to have. Okay. My thoughts are different. Okay. Ron? <clears throat> I just 
start lately thinking about some of my anger <clears throat> and you guys probably all mentioned all some of the physical symptoms and stuff, but I have a lot of the mental things in me because it's not always what that person has done to make me angry. It just opens something that I already have in that's me. Good. And that's that's what my anger is at. Arthur and then Trina. One of the things I do is uh, I, I was shut down. You know, mm -hmm. I was shut down and just better just start with water. I, I tend to pace back and forth and just let it boil more and fester more in, in my head and then everything just comes together that I've been angry about all for months and months. Amen. Amen. Jennifer and then Andrew. And then Maria, I see your hand. My thinking process changes and I become changes and I become impulsive. You become impulsive? Mm -hmm. What happens to you, Kylie? Uh, I have to agree with Jennifer. I, uh, you know, I kind of don't. I don't think before I act. I become very impulsive. Okay, Andrew. You know, for myself, at one point in time, I used to black out. You know, when I was a kid, at one point in time, I had to really catch myself now because I don't like that feeling when I black out. I just thank it for my um, self. I don't think for other people. Yes, Marie. Marie. Um, me, myself, I'm an introverted, angry person. Every muscle in my body gets tense. My jaw lock up <coughs> and I grind my teeth. That's how I am. Yeah. How many of you, one of my things, and I'm, I'm doing <coughs> over the years, I've become much better at it, but especially I hated it when it happened to me on, on my secular job. How many of you get are angry criers? You cried not because you're sad, but because you're mad, and then you cry because you're upset that you're crying, and it makes you look weak. Right. And I, I'm okay. Ooh, weak. <laughs> That's really mad, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Uh, it's not good. It's not healthy. That's why I said you were going down the right road. Deepness. How many know that there are some very unhealthy physical manifestations that go along with anger? <clears throat> and a lot of you um, brought a lot of them out. How anger affects you physically. Um, physical signs, heightened tension, shortness of breath, that's one for me. Rapid heart rate, headache or stomach ache, clenching your fist, I heard a lot of you say that, sweating. Emotional signs, depression, guilt, anxiety, release through tears or yelling or both. Yeah. Um, look at this one at the bottom. Real talk. Craving yep. alcohol, cigarettes, Ooh. food, or something to help you relax. Mm -hmm. Here's some other statistics I got. The brain shunts blood away from your gut and towards the muscles in preparation for physical exertion. Heart rate, blood pressure, and respiration increase. The body temperature rises and the skin perspires. Some, some of you said that. Emotional stress and anger release the stress hormone of cortisol in the body. How many know that cortisol produces belly fat? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cortisol is a hormone that's released during anger and stress. Small releases of cortisol can give the body a quick burst of energy. However, higher and more prolonged increases can bring the body a host of negative effects. It can create a blood sugar imbalance. It can decrease bone density, suppress the body's immune system, system and make it susceptible to chronic inflammation. We used to know somebody who had chronic and persistent um, arthritis. And his hands looked like witch's hands. And he held a lot of resentments and anger towards people. And when he got angry, his hands would literally, he couldn't straighten them out, would literally curl up. Mm. I've never seen physical manifestation of anger. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, like that. It can suppress thyroid function, slowing down the body's metabolism. Again, that's uh, what, gaining weight. It can impair the brain's thinking and ability to Increase blood pressure. Anger can raise your heart rate to 180 beats a minute. 
It can raise your blood pressure from 120 over 80 to 220 over 130, perhaps even higher. Your breathing becomes rapid as you try to get more oxygen your, to your body. Your body tenses and your muscles become tight. When you become stressed, your mind is in survival mode and your body releases chemicals to clot the blood, creating a, a potentially dangerous situation. A clot can travel through blood vessels in the brain of a heart, resulting in a stroke or a heart attack or a brain aneurysm. Anger also impedes circulation. Lack of oxygen can cause severe chest pains. Uncontrollable anger can trigger the bursting of a brain artery, causing a stroke. Tight neck, head muscles can cause tension, headaches, migraines, or lead to insomnia. There is a lot. It says anger stimulates the release of acids in the stomach and causing acid reflux. And gastric ulcers. It says it can also compromise our lung functions. Boy, that's a lot. Especially for someone who's chronically angry or chronically stressed out. If your current situation or your situation at your job or if, if any of these things are you're relating to, you might want to check your circumstances and your situations and either figure out how to remove yourself from them or how to cope with them and pray about it. This, this, is, the, uh, this is what this Bible study is about. You know, one of the things that I have learned over the years, because doing this, trust me, is very stressful. Um, but over the years, I've learned that it is your problem, not mine. <laughs> and it's up to me to help you learn how to fix it, but I don't have to take it home with me. Nor do I have to flip out and turn backflips over it, even though sometimes I still do. Brother Barry. Well, <laughs> I just mentioned that my brother told me that he, uh, when he got a divorce from his wife, he had acid reflux. Then when he got divorced from her, he went away. I didn't believe that. <laughs> just now you just mentioned that. So I guess. Uh, it's sad, but true. I guess so. Uh, mm -hmm. That's all. Uh, Ron, and then uh, Brother Arthur, and then I see your hand. I was just going to say that. I think you were speaking up there about five minutes and listing off some things. And you didn't look over here. I said, she's talking about me. <laughs> All throughout that. <clears throat> I think I had about a uh, anger here one time that I could control. You said that sometimes a person could hold it in for a little while and then the emotion would bring it out like crying. And I've always been a man that uh, I, I don't try to show my emotions, especially <coughs> anger. I think I had an incident in here where a visiting lady came, and she was with Ronnie, and she said that, I don't participate in any of that uh, religious stuff, so during my visit here, you guys just can't do that, because Ronnie has to stay in my care, and it blew over, I remember that. and when I tried to explain that, you know, I couldn't speak and stuff, and then uh, my anger and my emotion kind of spilled out, and I don't like that. But now I'm just trying to learn that. Hope that is not a good thing either. Because then that is what built up to that, you know, to be having that kind of emotional. <coughs> and the key out. was that you allowed yourself to be emotional with us, the proper people, and we were able to help you navigate through that situation eventually, right? Yes. And Ronnie ended up coming to church and everything else, right? Mm -hmm. Brother Arthur. You know, as you, as you were sharing up there, I was getting so wrong. Uh, Checks in my spirit. You know, and I can remember a lot of times when I was trying to smoke, trying to stop cigarettes, stop smoking cigarettes, and stay sober, and then I allow my wife's emotions to affect me so outrageously to where I would go pick up and, and, and a cigarette or whatever, and I, and I beat myself up a little bit more, and then it goes on and on and on. And I thought well, I'm stressed out or whatever, but I can really vision that, that, that the power, that, that giant, that you're going to have on you. Mm -hmm. It does. And sometimes some of us, when we were in our addictions, actually used that, um, stirred that anger thing up. Now look what you, now, now I'm mad. Now I'm getting ready to go get high. Exactly. Now I've got to have a drink. Look what you made me do. I need a cigarette. Mm -hmm. Oops. Yeah. Yeah.
excuse. Oh, leave me out here by myself. Excuse. <laughs> <laughs> no, you ain't alone. You need something. You so do. So, if anger is so horrible, why did God give it to us? Or did God give it to us? Maybe it's the spirit that got on us from the devil when we were born into this evil world. Is, is that the answer? No, I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, he gave it to us as a warning sign. Um, it it uh, lets us know that something somebody's attempting to uh, violate our boundaries. Um, the Bible tells us to be angry but sin not. Good, good. Uh, I got it, Barry. Anger is a God-given energy created to help us solve problems. Mm -hmm. And also we were created in God's likeness. Good. Mary, Andrew, Arthur. Mine might be totally different than everybody else's. This is what, what I was thinking about. Um, because he ain't, ain't going to just like to be happy all the time. Because like when you're angry, when you're sad, that's when me, myself, turns more to God. I think that if he sees that you can get, you know, when you're angry and you're like, oh God, please help me before I hurt this person. You know, I don't know. That's just what I think, that you'll go to God more when you're angry and you can't just be all happy all the time. I don't know. That sounds kind of mean, God. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. Oh, it is? Okay. Well, I don't know. Andrew. I heard pretty good times that God, God gave us a self-will at one point in time. We have all having self-will. Okay. All right. I want to say, Pedro, it, it, it allows me to, to, to you know, it, it, it puts me back to God because, you know, within myself, I'm, I'm going to just lash out. I'm going to hurt something, hurt somebody, hurt myself. So it, it puts me in, uh, thank you, Holy Ghost. It puts me in a position of humility to be able to get in my right place. Okay, thank you, Eric. Didn't he demonstrate anger as a lesson? We're going to go there. Brittany, what was part two of your answer? We were created in God's likeness. We are created in God's likeness. Does God have anger? Yeah. Genesis 1, 26 through 27 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created him, created him, male and female, he created them. So if God says that he's going to make us in his image, he's not going to withhold any part of him, self, right? Uh, like, uh, like, oh, like going along with the second part of my answer, um, how it um, alerts us to somebody trying to violate our boundaries. Well, God gave his people boundaries. And when those boundaries were broken, it broke God's anger. That's kind of like how you know, we are. Amen. Amen. So if uh, Jesus got angry at, in the temple, mm -hmm. then I think it was just to, to, to let you know that you are alive. Yeah. yeah. Anger is not always a sin. There's a type of anger, and I see your hand, son, which the Bible approves of. It's called righteous indignation. Biblically, anger is God-given energy intended to help us solve problems. And as so many of you have gone to, we're going to go there in just a second. Well, while we're listening to Pastor Corey, uh, go to John chapter 2. Um, that's what I was going to say. That God only uses anger in order to bring about justice for his people. And so a lot of times when we got angry, he was doing it to make things right or to make things fair for, for his people. And, and, and in a sense for himself as well because he didn't want his reputation smudged, you know, and shattered. So... Uh, righteous indignation is the only reason why God got angry is because he wanted to make things right and wanted to make things fair so that uh, so that his people 
will be noticed and that he will get the glory for. Yeah, just like what uh, we were saying when your boundaries get overstepped. You know, the incident that Ron was talking about, he was very upset, you know, and him being upset justifiably upset us. And we're like, oh, well, yeah, okay, here's what we're going to do. You know, and that's how God uh, allows us to be angry and not sin. Uh, Nicholas, and then we're going to move on. I think, um, like the last word we were saying that anger is a secondary emotion, right? So I think anger, just like, you know, as I, you know, learning about God, everything that happens, at least for me in my life, has always been the purpose to lead me to God. So I think when we're angry, we, you know, we, we, we Smith, in my, in, my, in my experience, to dig deeper to what's causing me to be angry, which in turn, once I learn what that is, you, I, I, you gotta, I, you know, learning. You gotta go to God to deal with whatever it is, which kind of, you know, I got think helps us distinguish right from wrong. If we're getting, you know, when we're getting angry, we're getting angry about something that's, you know, wrong, morally wrong, or is it morally right? And, and helps us. <coughs> and, in my opinion, it's, it's meant to lead us to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The the any anger other than righteous indignation over a situation has got something to do with some selfishness <coughs> and probably some immaturity on our part. Mm -hmm. Deaconess? Um, I met with my uh, therapist last week and he was explaining anger. Uh, he, he had described it like a tablecloth. Kind of move on the other side of your ground. There you go. Thank you. He had described it like a tablecloth. And I was like, a tablecloth? And he said, yeah, you know, what do you normally do with a tablecloth? So he said, you could take a tablecloth and you can cover up something because it's ugly or whatever. Or you can take a tablecloth just to show it off. Or you can just have a tablecloth because you're content with the tablecloth. And I was like, hmm, I didn't think of anger like that, you mm -hmm. know, until he broke it down that way. But I thought that was interesting when I shared that. Amen. Here's Jesus displaying anger. <coughs> Are you at John chapter 2? Verse 13. going to start at verse 11. Um, this is right after Jesus performs his first miracle. He turned the water into wine, and this is the next thing that happened after this, okay? He's just coming on the scene. He's brand new. Very cool. This is... <laughs> this beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum, he, his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they did not stay there many days. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers doing business. Verse 15. When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overturned tables. And he said to those who sold the doves, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Then his disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house has eaten me up. Why was he upset? Why was what was going on in the temple a problem for Jesus? So much so, uh, he, he didn't just go in there and say, Y'all, come on, y'all. Oh, no. He tore the place up. <laughs> Now seriously, get a picture of this. This is not the pure, soul, uh, sad talking Jesus that you see on TV. He tore the place up. Why was he so upset? Because the temple was was meant to worship, and, and I believe it was where God, you know, they said that was where God was going to reside. You know, when they built the, the temple of Solomon, so. It was probably God's house. It wasn't a place to, you know, trade anything. Even if it was to help the poor, it wasn't that you can do that outside the temple. It was meant to worship God and take offerings and sacrifices and, and, and whatnot. It wasn't meant for none of that. And even if there was a good intention, which obviously wasn't, but even if it was, you can do that somewhere else. Okay, thank you. I believe because they was knowledge of all that. That he was saying they were knowledge, they knew it, 
and he knew it, that they knew it, and they still did it. Okay. Thank you. There's a big word down there. Zeal. The zeal for your house has eaten me up. What does zeal mean? It's like having a passion for something, like, you know, you love it, you do anything, you, you really love someone, you do anything for it, you have, you have a passion for it. Okay. You're, you're overly, overly extra excited, passionate about it. I even, it's an, it's the, one of the definitions said excitement of mind or indignation. Were you going to say something, Tom? No, I'm sorry. Okay. You know what I said. Here's something that Pastor Bruce and I learned I think it was day 21 or 22 of the 40-day um, fast devotion. It says here that he said to the ones who sold the doves, he didn't say anything to the men that sold the ox and the sheep or the money changers, he spoke to the dove sellers. When God bap when Jesus got baptized, God opened up the heavens and sent down doves and said, This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Um, we got a different revelation. Some, some people say the doves represented the Holy Spirit, but is there another reason for the doves, do you suppose? New life. Mm, no. Doves. I was going to say pure. Mm. They were pure. Mm, and that wasn't it either. Barry, and then Arthur. No? Brother Arthur? Wasn't the dove sold as a, something like a sacrifice or like a... They were sold as a sacrifice to who? To God. No. To, 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 who? to who were the ones that were buying the doves? Oh, what, who yes. said that? Who said that? What did you say, Marie? The poor people. Poor people. The dove, when Jesus was being baptized, was a sign of humility. Ooh. Ah. Ah. Why? Because that was the poor's sacrifice. Oh, is anybody tracking with me? Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't. That's about the only thing a poor person could afford to sacrifice. And Jesus came for the poor and the downtrodden and the brokenhearted. He didn't say nothing else but to the people who were selling the doves to the poor people at a profit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hope y'all are getting this. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 14.31 says, whoever oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker. But whoever is kind to the needy honors <coughs> God. So, Proverbs 14, 31. Thank you. So he was upset because, yeah, because all that, all that business was going on in the sanctuary, but above all, they were oppressing the poor. They should have been giving them like, like we do in church, like Deacon Curtis does. They should have been giving the doves, not selling them at a profit. Mm -hmm. did, did, did I lose anybody? No. Somebody talk back to me and tell me, the significance of what I'm pointing out to you. Please. Because you said I'm not losing you, but I'm not here. I'm not seeing anybody catching this. <coughs> Brittany. Ron. <coughs> son. So if I'm following right, I mean, it's, it was more than just them disgracing the temple. It was, they were lowering, uh, pressing the, the people in poverty, and he was sent to give us, you know, new life, or to give us like a way out, you know. So was that right? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she pretty much said that. Um, but also, I can see that that is why he was angry. Says, now you come into my home, my house, the house that we worship, 
and this is what you're doing, and that really boiled over to his anger. Amen. Pastor Corey, then Arthur. <laughs> the scripture says that he that oppresses the poor oppresses his maker or brings shame to his maker and so when he brought up Genesis 1 how we are made in his image you know when we oppress the poor then we are saying that in essence we are saying that God how can I say this we're, in essence we are saying that I can't depend on God. And so with those money changes or those folks who sell them dope, they were saying that, basically saying that, um, and he only spoke to them too. And, uh, but what he was saying though is that, you know, because you're oppressing the poor, you're charging them for something that they shouldn't be charged for. Exactly. Okay. Next one real quick. We got, can, can I have five more minutes? No. Mark chapter 3. When you get there, Word. remember in the beginning I said, Word. why did Jesus start talking about murder and anger? and addressing it to the crowd, and that the Pharisees were in the crowd. <coughs> Follow me in the scripture. Mark chapter 3, starting at verse 1. And this is another display of anger. When he entered the synagogue again, and a man was there who had a withered hand. So they watched him closely, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, step forward, verse 4. Then he said to them, and he's talking to who? The Pharisees. the Pharisees. And he said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good, to do evil, to save a life, or to kill? But they kept silent. They wouldn't answer him. And when he looked around at them, and when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as whole as the other. In his anger, he did something that was forbidden on the Sabbath, which was to do any work at all. That's, that's how far the Pharisees drug this out. The Jews so believed in no work on the Sabbath that they cooked their meals the day before. Uh, in some communities now, uh, you know, they take it to the level of you can't turn on a light switch. Anything is, any manual labor is considered work. And Jesus is saying, are you kidding me? You're telling me I can't heal this person because it's the Sabbath? Here, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. And he healed them. And then look what happened. Then the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. There's other translations that say the Pharisees got indignant and immediately went out to plot how to murder him. Start cussing up. Anger leading to murder. And that's why he started with that. Because if you think about it, anger and being displeased and jealousy and, 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 and having uh, their authority taken away from them in the way that they did things is what got Jesus crucified mm -hmm. in the first place. Mm -hmm. Because somebody didn't want to do things different mm -hmm. or do things the right way. Mm -hmm. How many times have we folded our arms or pouted or got angry because someone was pointing out to us, this is the way you should do it? A lot. And we murdered that person by stabbing them in the back by saying, they need to leave me alone. What? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to 
going to stop right there. That's the message. <laughs>